everyone. We're at the Olsen truck stop. Everyone seems to be gone already. Oh, there's still a few people here. Just walking in, grabbing a coffee, getting myself cleaned up, ready for the day. We're going home today. I'm about six hours from the Canadian border, but another hour and a half to our yard. And I gotta drop this trailer, get another trailer ready for next week, because I'll need a step deck for next week. I wanna get that one all ready to go. And we'll go home. Bought some breakfast. First stop is just down the road in St. Cloud. <clears throat> the pilot once again has the cheapest juice. I will fill up the tanks and then we'll be on a beeline towards home. Eastern North Dakota. 
Dakota. Right on the eastern edge, going up I-29. Pointed our nose straight at Canada. Have you ever seen such natural beauty? So many things to see. From where we sit, we can see at least two different kinds of trees. More blades of grass than you can count. They're all brown, but uh, you'll give it a few months and they'll be green again. That's nice, right? Farmers. It's beautiful. If you're wondering where your food comes from, this is what it looks like, where we grow food. It doesn't come from the grocery store. I know, mind-blowing. It actually comes from here. All joking aside, though, I, I do love this region because it's home to me. I love the open sky. The only thing I could say that is kind of unpleasant about being on the prairies and plains is that it gets real windy a lot, but obvious for obvious reasons. <laughs> but you know, it's the center of the continent. It's a place where I can feel safe, feel at home. This is where my family has our roots dug down all the way back to 1874. So this is my home and I don't have any other home anywhere else. This will always be my home. Where I belong. And this is gonna be my kids' home too. Maybe when they grow up, maybe they'll move away to a different part of the country. I hope they stay close to home though. Because Southern Manitoba is pretty great. It's flyover country, not a lot of people know we exist. Not a lot to talk about. I mean, all of this scenery here, I know it is kind of overwhelming, but nothing quite beats the feeling of feeling at home. Do you have that where you live too? You know, if you're from the Appalachian Mountains, you probably have that same feeling when you go back to Appalachia or the Rocky Mountains. When you go there, or wherever you're from. We got some great excitement coming up here. We have an overpass. You guys ready? Wow. See, that's the kind of excitement you can look forward to when you visit North Dakota and Manitoba. I'm an hour and a half from the border. And yes, I am bored out of my mind looking at this highway just going on and on and on and on. But that's okay. Home is at the end of this road. You can sort of see it already. It's very, 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 very tiny. But home is at the end of this road. Highway, highway 29 and that. Keep to the left at 1.4 kilometers. You guys gotta watch out for these potholes. Both sides of the border leading up to it, between the lanes, they need to be filled. Just coming up to Canada. We'll get ourselves to the other side. And we're still on our journey home, rushing as much as we can. Made no unnecessary stops today. So as I get into line here to cross, I get all the answers to all the questions that they may ask me to the front of my head so I'm not sitting there like a deer in the headlights when they ask me the questions. How long was I down in the States? Well, today's Friday when I'm filming this. I picked that load up on Wednesday, right? Crossed Wednesday, delivered Thursday, been in the US for three days. Where did you go? I brought a load down to Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. From there, I went empty down to Evansville, Wisconsin, picked up this current load, and I'm taking it back to our yard near Winnipeg, Manitoba. Do you have any weapons on board? No. Do you have any alcohol on board? No. Do you have any fruits? Sometimes they ask that, sometimes they don't. They switch up the questions every time, so it's not exactly the same every time. Do you have anyone else 
in the truck with you. No, just me. Me, myself, and I. Those three are the only people in here. I would recommend don't make jokes with them, though. They're not here to be your friend. They're here to be, to do their job. And their job is to make sure you are who you say you are and your freight is what you say it is on your trailer. They need to know what's coming into the country and what's leaving. So they might seem a little grumpy to you. They're probably not. They're just at work and they're not being paid to be your friend. So just keep that in mind. Just answer their questions, speak when spoken to, and you'll be fine. As long as, you, as, long as you're operating and crossing within the law. That's the best thing I would recommend to all of you. If you're going to cross an international border, do it legally. Go to a port of entry and do it legally. Make sure you got your passport with you and all documentation you need for your freight and everything. If you've got pets with you, make sure that you have proof that they've been vaccinated, that they have the rabies and everything. You're gonna need, they may ask for that. Honestly, they've never asked me for that when I had diesel with me, but they do sometimes from what I've heard. You need to be able to prove that they have all of their current vaccinations required to cross the border. You never quite know what they're gonna ask, and that's kind of the point, right? They don't want you to, they don't want you to, they want to catch you off guard. So make sure you got nothing to hide, and you'll be fine. Don't give them attitude, because that'll get you in trouble. And another big piece of advice is, when you get to the window, do not pull your brakes. They really don't like that. Don't pull your brakes and shut your truck off so they can hear you. And we're across. Pull over here, I got a mark into my e-log. It was so fast, I didn't have time to make a mark on there saying that I crossed the border. Another uh, big piece of advice that I can add to the don't tr don't shut your truck off, don't pull your brakes, just hold your foot on the brake. Make sure your interior lights are on in your truck so that they can see everything in your truck as you're rolling up to the window. Border, I crossed the border. Let the government know that I just crossed the government border. They should know, but there we go, there we go. Come on. Computers, computers, I tell you, always slow. Slow, slow, slow. There we go. Beautiful. Now we're on Canadian hours of service. He did good, Blue. Let me check your headlights. Oh, good. It looks like the moisture that looked like it was in there is gone. Maybe I was just seeing things? Oh, there's a little bit in here. But it looks for the most part gone. Okay, good. And then... Looks like things will be okay then. Thought it'd be such a shame if I just installed these new headlights and Right away, they got moisture inside them, right? Some LED headlights have that problem. I didn't take that protective wrapper off all the way. Oops. Oh, there's a little bit in there. In there. Oh, this is what it is. Maybe when it goes from a cold environment into a warm environment like this, some builds up in there, and then it goes away when it evens out. I don't know. Anyways, I'm hungry, and I want to go home. So I dropped my trailer off at work. It's going to be delivered by someone else. They only want it in the new year, so because we're holding on to it till then. Someone else will deliver it, or maybe I'll deliver it. I don't know. They want it delivered on like the 5th or something? I don't know. So I got my equipment off of it. I grabbed a step deck, and uh, now that trailer's all ready to go Monday afternoon. Monday afternoon, evening. Because uh, Tuesday morning, I have to deliver in, or pick up and deliver. 
pick up in Kenora and deliver in Brainerd, Minnesota. So that will be the first thing in the morning, Tuesday at 7 a.m. So I'm gonna go sleep there Wednesday, uh, Monday night to make sure I'm there, make sure I don't hit any delays. We'll get that week started. It's the last week of work before Christmas holidays. Right, Blue? You ready for Christmas? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, there it is, see? Ready for Christmas. So you'll be good, all right? I'll be back. All tucked in. Have a good sleep. Hey guys, so I'm only at home here just for a short little while and I'm gonna head out on the road for one more trip before Christmas. But as you can see, the house is pretty much all ready for Christmas. Next year we wanna go a little bit bigger. That's the goal for every year. We wanna go a little bit bigger every year. Make Christmas the most magical time for our kids, right? We'll see what happens. Anyway, so I'm gonna enjoy some time here at home. I'm not gonna film too much, but we'll be back in the truck before you know it for one last trip.